This is the new Volkswagen ID Buzz, and it's a little bit like Francis Bourgeau, the famous train spotter. You see, train spotters aren't known for being cool, but somehow he is. Same with this. It's an electric powered van based people carrier. Not normally known for being cool, but somehow the ID Buzz is. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you why by talking you around the exterior design, the interior, taking it for a drive, and launching it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Not that that's exactly relevant in a vehicle like this, but I can't help myself because I'm at Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the ID Buzz. And considering it's basically a square oblongy shape, it somehow looks cool. I, I just don't know why, but it does, doesn't it? The wraparound light here, you've got this full length light bar, you've got a spoiler up there, big back window, huge VW badge, the largest VW badge on any vehicle in their range, similar to that on the original T1 from 1949. That had a huge VW badge as well. Moving down the side, one thing I don't like, these graphics unnecessary. So I've actually photoshopped the look of this car so you can see what it looked like without these graphics. I think it looks better but do you agree? I'll put a pinned comment below you can vote. Wheel sizes start at 19 so these are 20s but they do go all the way up to 21s. Down the side once again oblongy shape nice strong creases in the doors though and once again wrap around lights looking cool and at the front I'm sure the lower part of the bumper has been inspired by Crocs shoes. Now once again, huge VW badge on the front and it sort of has a cutesy smiley face to it, doesn't it? I really love the short overhang as well. It's very, very cool looking. It's not cheap though, this thing. Starts from 57,000 pounds. Now, if you want to check out the latest offers on a wide range of new cars and check out our reviews and stuff like that, just simply Google help me car wow and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price. The inside of the ID Buzz is just as cool as the exterior. If you pay the extra for the two-tone paint, you can then pay a bit more on top to get the two-tone interior, which you should definitely do because it just looks super cool and interesting. I quite like the design of the dash as well with all the different stages and steps to it, the air vents, and this may look like wood, but it's plastic. I don't mind that because it just looks really, really nice. And I like the way that they thought about various little cool features around the car. For instance, you have pause and play for the brake and the accelerator pedal. Then even here, a covering for a screw head, it's got a little smiley face on it, and there's various little images of an ID buzz around the cabin. And if you're a little bit of a tree hugger and like to virtue signal, you can also say that quite a lot of the interior materials are from recycled stuff, so that's good. And the steering wheel may feel like leather, but it's not made out of dead animal skin. It is synthetic. Now let's move on to the infotainment system because Volkswagen's latest infotainment system isn't all that good. Yes, you've got this nice big bright screen and it has gesture controls there, see them? Doesn't always work. Sod it. To be fair, it can be a little bit laggy. I'm not that impressed with this infotainment system. I also don't like the fact that you have to control the climate controls using these slider switches here like that. And then if you want to actually adjust the fan, you have to go into the climate menu. It's all too much of a faff. I'd rather have some proper knobs. Speaking of being a knob, the best way for me to sum up this infotainment system is to point you to this place in Germany. What you're gonna really do is just plug in your phone, use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Though once again, it's not seamless with the VW system. And that brings me on to this little digital driver's display. It does have a bit more information on it than it does in the ID3, but it's a little bit small, and compared to other digital driver's display, you don't get that much detail, which is a bit of a shame. The driving position is good though, so you're sitting up quite nice and high, and you can raise your seat, you can raise and lower and extend and push away. <laughs> the steering wheel. And in the ID3, you have the drive mode selector up here. It's actually on a stalk on the ID Buzz, which is a better place for it. And in terms of practicality, this car is pretty blooming good. Look, we have a little shelf there for storing bits and pieces, but if you want to stop them rolling around, you've got a massive glove box. Look, it can fit a huge bottle and they'll fit in the very big door bins as well. You've got some more storage in here. Look, your cup holders there. <laughs> All very well and good that. It is a nice, practical, spacious feeling vehicle. And I like this. I love these armrests. The armrests in this thing are just perfect. Here in the back seats, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it's surprisingly cramped for knee room. Ah, don't you worry, look at this. You can slide the seats back like this. And of course, 
you can also oh, recline them nicely. Recline this one as well. There we go. Look, and then you've got absolutely loads of knee room, loads of headroom. It's super comfy here. Even the middle seat is pretty good. Look at that. Because you have a flat floor, the person in the middle can stretch out. Look, they're actually in the best position. Also, the body's quite wide, so three adults can sit across this bench in comfort. If you need to carry more people though, there will be an extended wheelbase version that's a seven seater and of course a camper version will come in due course. Now let's look at other areas of practicality. You've got some pockets on the seat back, then a smaller one there where you can put your mobile phone and it is big enough for look, like more like iPad sized things. And we've got some picnic tables which are on a ratchet so they're pretty tough. You know you're going to suddenly end up with your picnic in your lap. Got a little cup holder in it as well. And you've got some big door bins here. Let me just get my bottle. Look, fit in there and there's some more storage there. USB-C there for charging your electric devices. Then you've got your Isofix anchor points just down here. Very easy to access. In fact, it's so simple to fit a baby seat in this vehicle because you've got nice wide openings. They're easy to get at and there's loads of room. So even if you've got one of those bulky rear facing seats, there's plenty of space for everyone. Really good. It's just a shame you don't get Isofix anchor points on the front passenger seat as well but I guess you can't have everything. Now let's check out the boot. Just wait for this to open. Finally. So, big capacity underneath this tonneau cover, 1,121 litres, which is more than twice the capacity of an ID4. Now, let me just show you this. Let's remove the tonneau cover. Come on. Easy to remove. The top of the range ID buzz comes with this thing called the life board. So it means items are a bit easy to get in and out and it divides things up so you can have like soft shopping underneath and look on this you've got your yeah, basket full of charging cables and all that kind of shenanigans now you can remove it but it's a bit of a faff you have to like unscrew some bits you might be thinking why do they go with this solution with like, these these legs for this life board when they just have some like plastic runners well i think the reason for that is that this board will actually be the base that the mattress will go on when you have the camper version of the ID buzz. So anyway, let me remove this and show you what you get if you don't have it. So if you've got one of the entry level models, so bear with me. Can someone else do this please on board? Come on. Finally, now you can see why they put the life board in there on the high spec cars, because when you fold down the rear seats like this, look, whee, you end up with a massive ridge, which you won't have with that life board in place. And the problem with that, of course, is that if you need to load heavy items and push them to the front, uh, it's not gonna be all that practical. Anyway, that brings me to five annoying things about the ID bus. You can't open the windows here in the back, not at all. And that's especially annoying because for some reason there doesn't seem to be any air vents here in the back either, like you get in most of the vehicles. So what are you supposed to do for ventilation? There's only one standard colour and it's silver. But anyway, you're going to want two-tone because it looks cool. Unfortunately, two-tone paint costs £1,800. Now you'd think for that price they'd manage to line it up properly. Look at that. Not very good, is it? And neither is this. Look. The seam sealer there looks like it's been done as part of a school project. And check this out, this is especially annoying. When you shut the back door, the seal does that! This is not acceptable on a car at this price! To get rid of that, you have to open that door, then, then shut it. What the actual f The keyless guard in this vehicle has a sensor in the seat so you can tell when you're sat, ready to drive. Thing is, if you so much as move your bottom slightly, say to twist around to talk to someone like that, you get this little jingle. So imagine you're trying to get out, sneak a little fart while having a chat. Yeah, you're gonna have like a drum roll to intro it. The way this locking mechanism protrudes from the tailgate can be problematic if you're quite tall and are reaching heavy things out of the cargo area. Now I'll illustrate that now with six foot three inch tall Jack here. So he's gonna reach this heavy item out of the boots, he's backing up as you would do and then, sorry I missed that, can you just show it again? So he's backing up and then this is what happens. Now I think I missed it again, just one more time. 
So yeah, he's lifting something heavy out and then he's backing up. Oh, sorry, I missed it again, mate, I'm sorry. In the past, Volkswagen used to line all their door pockets with felt to stop things rattling around, but maybe because of cost cutting due to diesel gate. They've only been able to like line one of the pockets there, this down here, no lining. As a result, if you put your keys in there, you're gonna get this while driving along. That's gonna really do your head in. It's not all bad though. Look at this, right? You've got a USB-C charging port there, and that can charge at 45 watts, which means you can actually charge a juicy old Apple MacBook Pro. Look, it's charging. The ID Buzz will be available with vehicle to home charging. So basically, you'll be able to plug the cable into a special wall box in your house and use the energy in the vehicle's battery to run things in your house, which is kind of handy if you live in a country who relies on another country for most of its energy supply and that other country is threatening to turn it off due to political reasons. This thing here is called the Buzz Box. It's not because it's packed full of Class A's, it's because its features are designed to make you buzz like you are on Class A's. No, nothing to do with Class A's. It has this receptacle here. Don't know what that's for. Car manufacturers sometimes have these, but I don't know. Anyway, I get this, right? This divider doubles as an eye scraper. Cool. Then this divider is a bottle opener, obviously for opening bottles of non-alcoholic beer. Then you've got this little drawer here, which is definitely not for storing your Class A's in. And then there's a big drawer here, which is definitely not for storing the money that you've earned from selling Class A's, okay? It's not for that at all. This is just for practicality. And you can easily remove it. Obviously not, so that you can suddenly get rid of all the evidence before the police come. <laughs> the ID light across the front of the dash can show various bits of information such as whether you need to turn left or right according to the sat lab directions or it can even show you how much charge you've got and how much charging you've left to go. There's a really useful little space there for storing your mobile phone when you're driving and it's even got an inbuilt wireless charging pad. The space is actually big enough to hold my fat Samsung Fold. All right, look, it'll fit in there. However, it won't wireless charge it in there. It doesn't matter too much though, because you can just use these cables to charge instead. And I actually prefer charging by a cable anyway, because it stops your phone getting so hot. As with all other electric cars from Volkswagen, there is no storage underneath the bonnet. Though this doesn't really have a bonnet, it's got such a stubby nose. So I don't mind so much with the ID Buzz. Look, that's where you fill your washer fluid for the windscreen. Just thought I'd share that with you. Anyway, let's move on to motors. So the ID Buzz is rear wheel drive. It's got a single electric motor on the rear axle produces 204 horsepower. Though there will be a dual motor version, which is four wheel drive coming with 299 horsepower. The battery capacity is 77 kilowatt hours, and Volkswagen says that'll give you a range of 258 miles. As for charging, it can charge at 170 kilowatts on DC charging, and up to 11 kilowatts on AC charging. Bit of a shame you can't do 22 kilowatts AC charging, but then not many electric cars actually can. Right, let's see what this ID Buzz is like to drive. We're gonna start off in town, and I blooming love it here. Main reason, this elevated driving position, you actually sit higher than in many SUVs. There is no point to get an SUV anymore. If you wanna look cool, get one of these. Has all the benefits of an SUV, but without any of the pointlessness, nuss, nuss. Yeah, brilliant visibility. Obviously, you know, bonnets have to look over, so you get a great view out the front windscreen. You've got this extra window here that really helps, and it's quite maneuverable for a big vehicle. So the turning circle is just over 11 meters, and hopefully I should be able to do a U-turn in here. Come on, look at this, look at this. Without curbing, without curbing. Oh yeah, hey, <laughs> no fails for me on my driving test for that maneuver. I don't think anyway, I didn't touch any curbs, that's what I mean. Now, one other thing about electric cars is that their brakes can feel a little bit grabby at times because they have to blend together their regenerating effect when the motor is porting energy back into the battery with the actual proper friction brakes. These are smooth. I do have one problem though. While you do have an enhanced regen mode when you're in B, it slows the car down more when you lift off the accelerator, it never actually fully stops it. So look, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna hit the car in front. Of oh no, I had to brake them myself. Why don't they just give you proper full-on one pedal driving when the car will stop, like a Tesla does? Don't know. Now let's see what the ID Buzz is like when you go out on faster roads. Now there's enough zip to nip about around town, but what about, let's say, when you're just traveling at 50 miles an hour, you need to accelerate onto a motorway. So here we go, going around 50 now, I'm gonna floor it. 
pickup is okay and there is 70 now yeah it's not zippy in the same way that a tesla is definitely not at all tesla model y will blow this away in terms of performance and when you're going faster you notice that if the road is a bit kind of undulating and has some imperfections it does jiggle a little bit the suspension does in town at slow speeds it's quite smooth but i don't think at high speeds this goes down the road quite as majestically as a hyundai ionic 5. it's quiet though all you get is a bit of wind whistle from those big door mirrors. Well, I like those big door mirrors because you can see quite a lot in them. It's generally quite a nice thing to do a long distance in. Well, as long a distance as you can do. So this ID bus is averaging 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. And when you multiply that up by the 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, that means a real world range of 215 miles. It's enough, I guess. Finally then, I'm gonna try the ID bus on a winding country road. What's it like? So it's rear wheel drive, so you get a nice sensation of being pushed out of the bends, a bit like a sports car. It steers sharply enough, goes exactly where you want it to go, and it doesn't lean too much either, considering it's a tour vehicle, but I'm not going to get too carried away because it is still a big practical people carrier, isn't it? And it will eventually start to push wide if you do actually treat it like a sports car, which of course it isn't supposed to be treated like. Speaking of which, you do have a sports mode, which makes the throttle response sharper and adds weight to the steering. I wouldn't bother with that at all. Just take it for what it is and it goes around corners well enough. And certainly well enough to make your passengers feel a little bit sick. <laughs> Do you know what, I really like this. It's got so much character, I want one. And if you want one and you need to sell your current car to get one, then click on the pop out banner to get a car wow because you can upload some photos of your car and then our dealers will bid on your car. You can choose the highest offer. Now come to your house, take the car away, and give you the money, it's dead simple. Volkswagen says the ID Buzz could do 0-60 in 10.2 seconds, but I'm going to find out the truth with my specialist timing gear here. Launch time. Not the fastest off the line. Doing a bit better now. Come on, what time are we going to get? What are you going to do? <laughs> Way faster than they said. 8.9 seconds. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's all right for a family-friendly, people-carrying, electric vehicle -ing cool looking machine. So then what's my final verdict on the Volkswagen ID Buzz? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I do know that it's kind of expensive, but do you know what? It's very practical and it's got so much character. I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy it if you can afford it. There really is no other electric vehicle that's as cool as it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and let me know what you think of my verdict. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. That way you won't miss a single upload.